Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. As always, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. And here we are back with my BA3 final submission. Now, this is the second video of two different videos. The first video is a walkthrough, me going through explaining how I responded to the brief and what my actual submission was. And then this video is one aimed more at architecture students. It's a little bit more in depth and I'm gonna be showing you the actual original document for the brief. And then what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be explaining some of the changes I would have made if I was doing this project now. And I'm also gonna be going in depth and talking about the one fundamental simple issue that I think cost me quite a lot of marks. Super easy fix. Um, I'm really annoyed I didn't do it, but hopefully if you guys watch till the end of the video, you'll see that you won't make it either. Now, it's really important to note, if you haven't seen my previous video, I would really recommend going and watching that because that video explains the full project. I'm gonna be doing this video with the assumption that you kind of already understand the project and my submission. So if you haven't seen that, go quickly check out that video and then come back here. Now, starting off, first let me show you guys the brief. The brief is only a few pages. What we do is we, the entire project is based around hybrid sustainable housing. We have a little bit of an introduction. We, it talks about the design challenge and designing sustainable buildings in today's society. There is then a little bit of information about the location, which was individual to studio, which is why it's not listed on here. And then there is a little bit about the actual brief itself, and then there's some miscellaneous information on how to submit and things like this. So here we are on the front page. Now, as I mentioned in my previous video, I'm really happy with the quality of it. I think it's quite welcoming, it's really clean, and generally there isn't really much I change about it. Now, moving on to the second page. Again, as I said, I think this page is really important. It's It kind of sets the pace for the entire project. Now, I really like the idea that I've done where I've posed as my own architecture firm and done a manifesto for the firm. It shows my design philosophy and my views behind architecture. It's really important to mention the client, a little bit about the site and obviously the brief. Now, what would I change here? Now, what I would do is you see the section of users. I think this part is really important and by putting it at the bottom of the page, it kind of detracts from it and makes it seem like it's just another point. What I would do is I would take this users chunk and I'd put it on its own new page. And this is also where I think my fundamental issue is. And I will come back to this in a bit. So I would move all of the users onto its own page and I would bulk out that section. And I'll explain to you guys in a bit how I would do that. Now, what you guys are gonna find, my views on this project and what I would change tend to be pretty recurring. So for example, one of the key things I would change about this document is I just think there's way too much text. It's quite hard to just read massive blocks of text like this without getting bored, unless you're really interested in this side of architecture. So this is why I think it's really important to try have your text be concise and not too big blocks. And then if you can, try make things into diagrams wherever you can. Moving on to my site analysis. Now, this is one of the one, this is one of the pages that I'm really, really not happy with. I think it was a very last minute thing and I was getting quite tired and just wanted to get it done. But if I was to go back and redo this, what I would do is for the top two thirds of the page, I would do one large site analysis. This site analysis would have a lot of key information on it. For example, the wind, the transport, the sun would all be on this one diagram. And then what I would do is I would have at the bottom a little bit of text and then some macro images zooming into specific elements because you don't need this many diagrams. A lot of this information could have just fit onto one page. I will pop on a few good examples um, on the screen now, just in case you guys are interested. Then moving on, we have the two key focuses of my project. So this is a continuation of the site analysis, but we're going into depth on a couple of things. Again, I would change how I've done this. I would do less text and I would try find a more unique and interesting way to, to demonstrate this, but I do like the diagrams I've done. Now, moving on to the next two pages, we have the precedent studies. And if I click forward, you've got my massing development. Now, as I mentioned, this is something we're, we're expected to put in for our actual examinations and submissions, just to show how we've developed the idea. I spent a lot of time thinking about how I would improve this, and I think I figured it out. The way I would do this is I would try to do some kind of visual timeline. So I would have a start and a finish, and this would be the duration of my project. 
And then throughout that, I can show initial sketches, I can show precedents and where in the process they were used. And I think it would just demonstrate a lot of this development a lot better. I think, for example, you could possibly even have four or five precedents in and show how specific precedents helped address specific issues or specific design criteria and just generally give a better idea of the full process. Moving on to the AXO. Now this AXO I'm actually really happy with. I like how it looked. I did possibly want to look at trying to add shadows, but just due to time, it would have taken quite a while. Now I have actually included this axonometric in my architecture portfolio. I'm going to pop a photo on the page right now because I have actually changed it. I've got rid of all the images and I've put them throughout the document. And then what I've done is I've put symbols and those symbols will have a key. I think this is just a generally better way of laying it out because the key doesn't need these lines going all the way across the document and it just looks a lot cleaner. Now, moving on to the roof plan. Now, there is actually a very large issue with this. You can't really tell in the document because I've tried to hide it, but I actually designed the structure wrong. The way I've staggered the floors are supposed to allow as much sun coming in from the bottom left side. What I actually realized is somewhere in my traces, in my drawings, I'd actually got the, the angle mixed up. And unfortunately the sun actually goes around the back side of the building. So this staggered floors would actually be casting a massive shadow on the rest of the building. Unfortunately, it's too late to change that, but that's something I really should have noticed earlier on in the project. So hopefully if you guys have got any issues, maybe just check that. The way I've got around this is I've shown the absolute furthest point so where the shadows are now is actually close to sunset. So I have tried to kind of hide it, but unfortunately that is a big mistake. And that's just something I need to remember for next time. Now, moving on to the actual project itself, I'm gonna whiz through these next pages because a lot of the comments are the same. Now, if you see some of my previous projects, I've actually done floor plans with textures on. I think this is really good because it kind of shows the atmosphere and, and feeling of the space. But unfortunately, when you're going on such a large scale, I think clean black and white diagrams are actually the best. Now, alongside that, because I've got these black and white clean diagrams, they're really legible and really easy to read. But unfortunately, it's very hard to understand the atmosphere and feeling of the space. That is why I would change my presentation style if I was redoing this. So rather than doing these line diagrams with kind of collage um, materials, what I would do is I would actually model all of this and render it all out as high quality renders. This is one of the areas I think that I've lost a lot of marks. The reason being is part of your project is based on how well the, the marker and the, the people looking at your work can actually resonate with the project, can understand it and, and kind of connect with it. It's very hard to just look at a diagram like this and get a real understanding for the presence of the building and how it would actually feel. And the better you convey that, the, the better your mark is going to be just because it's, it's more understandable and it's more legible. Some of the things I do really like about this submission though, I'm really, really happy with the color palette and I'm really, really happy with the composition. I think this style of laying work out, it looks really visually appealing and you kind of get all the necessary information per page. So again, same as my previous comment with the renders as well, I really do like this collage style and I think it works really well for certain projects, but I don't think it works that well for this project. Again, for this project, I would actually probably model all of this out and try do some kind of high quality render just to give a better idea of textures and atmosphere and lighting because this is very kind of flat and 2D. I'm generally happy with the submission, but again, a lot of those same criticisms resonate throughout the pages again with this diagram i'd make it a higher quality one try and make it hyper realistic and then again with some of these diagrams like this one i would try add some kind of emotion some kind of feeling because this looks very very basic and then i'm very happy with the diagrams i think they explain the concepts very clearly and also i'm very happy with the final pages with the actual individual rooms and then finally, this page was necessary because we did have to submit a model. But if I was to do this my own way, I probably would get rid of this. Or what I would do is I would try do one of the hyper realistic model renders digitally. So I'll pop on some photos now of models that are actually not real. They're 
digitally rendered in V-Ray to create a realistic effect. Now, at the start of this video, I explained there is one key fundamental issue that I think I've made in this project that's massively affected my marks. Now, what is it? The thing that has affected this, I believe, is a lack of story and a lack of narrative. For architecture, the idea of narrative and story is absolutely fundamental in my eyes. This is not something I believed in university, but I've now realized its importance. When you're pitching a design to a client, the thing that is going to sell it to them is the emotion behind it, how well they can picture themselves in the space and how well connected they feel to the project. Because of the way I've presented this work, it, as I've mentioned, it's very cold, it's very flat. Unfortunately, it's very, very hard to picture yourself in that space because it's very hard to understand the spatial qualities, the lighting qualities and the general atmosphere. As you heard in my previous video, I have based this design of three key archetypes. Those are postgraduates, young professionals and new families. This is because I believe these are three key archetypes that could benefit from low cost housing. And I've used that to help inform the design and layout for the modular accommodations. How would I add story and narrative to help benefit my project and help it flow better? So what I would do is I would make each individual a lot more personal. I would give them all names and I would give them all scenarios and their own backstories. And then what I would do is, for example, we would follow throughout the project the narrative of one individual, for example, let's call him Damien. He's got a new family due to the recent COVID pandemic. He's having financial issues. And then due to the cost of living crisis, he's in a difficult position. Damien has applied for a space in one of the low cost housing and he's currently on the waiting list, but he's going to get his own place. In this story, we then explain the situation he was in and then we show directly how the elements I've added into my design will benefit him. So I will put it on a direct level where Damien works long nights. In the evenings, he goes to the canteen and gets healthy food. He's really happy that he can get healthy, different cuisines to feed his family without having to go feed them junk food. Things like this make it so much more personal. It makes your project something tangible, something real and something that's actually going to benefit the community. So regarding the layout, I would take the users off this page, I would put it on a new page and I would give an entire story about this guy, say Damien. I would put images, I would talk about the situation and then I would talk about even how how over a certain period of time, maybe Damien stays there one or two years, how over that two year period, staying in this building actually helps him get back on his feet and actually helps him help his family and himself. This simple narrative and dialogue accompanied with the project, I believe will make it so much more personal. You can put yourself in Damien's shoes and I think that would allow you to articulate the building's use and its purpose so much better. And I think that would massively benefit in terms of marks. Now, keep in mind this idea of narrative. I do not think it is a intentional, I think it's a very subconscious thing. And just naturally when we're looking at a project, Keep in mind, your lecturers, your examiners, your markers, they're people too. They have their own experiences, they have their own opinions. And just subconsciously, I think they're going to mark something better if they connect with it and understand it and resonate with it than if it's just a simple another design. Keep in mind, these guys are seeing different architecture projects all day. And the more personal you make it, the more you stand out and the more they actually connect with it and can understand it. I think subconsciously, they're naturally going to mark your work higher. So guys, that is all we have today. Hopefully you found it helpful. Now, really quickly, I've decided regarding my BA3 final submission, I'm gonna turn it into a mini series. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be getting the original InDesign document on my computer, and we're gonna be working through and editing and redoing the renders and redoing the entire project for how I would do it, knowing what I now know to get the highest amount of marks. So guys, if you do want to see that, make sure to hit that notification bell so you catch my new videos. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll catch you guys in a future video. Take it easy.